February 3rd, 3.51 p.m., and we're going to read Chapter 3 of Part 2 of Liber Eba, The Altar. The altar represents the solid basis of the work, the fixed will of the magician, and the law under which he works. It represents the extension of will. Will is the dyad. See the section on the wand. Two times two is four, so the altar is four square, and also its ten squares show four. Ten equals one plus two plus three plus four. Within this altar everything is kept, since everything is subject to law, except the lamp. According to some authorities, the altar should be made of oak to represent the stubbornness and rigidity of law. Others would make it of acacia, for acacia is the symbol of resurrection. The altar is a double cube which is a rough way of symbolizing the great work, for the doubling of the cube, like the squaring of the circle, was one of the great problems of antiquity. The surface of the altar is composed of ten squares, the top is kether and the bottom malkuth. The height of the altar is equal to the height above the ground of the navel of the magician. The altar is connected with the Ark of the Covenant, Noah's Ark, the nave, navis a ship, of the church and many other symbols of antiquity, whose symbolism has been well worked out in an anonymous book called the Canon, which should be studied carefully before constructing the altar. That author is William Sterling, and he wrote that book in 1897. For this altar must embody the magician's knowledge of the laws of nature, which are the laws through which he works. He should endeavor to make geometrical constructions to symbolize cosmic measurements. For example, he may take the two diagonals as, say, the diameter of the sun. Then the side of the altar will be found to have a length equal to some other cosmic measure, a vesica drawn on the side some other, a rude cross within the vesica yet another. Each magician should work out his own system of symbolism, and he need not confine himself to cosmic measurements. He might, for example, find some relation to express the laws of inverse squares. The top of the altar should be covered with gold, and on this gold should be engraved some such figure as the Holy Oblation, or the New Jerusalem, or if you have the skill, the microcosm of Vitruvius, of which we give illustrations. On the sides of the altar are also sometimes drawn the great tablets of the elements and the sigils of the holy elemental kings, as shown in the equinox, for these are the syntheses of the forces of nature. Yet these are rather special than general symbols, and this book purports to treat only of the grand principles of working. 